The recent basketball game went from throwing free throws to throwing blows. Michigan head basketball coach Juwan Howard has been suspended for the rest of the regular season following a physical altercation with an opposing team and members of their coaching staff that occurred after the Wolverines lost to the Badgers on Sunday. Mm. In addition, Howard was fined $40,000 for Ouch. the incident. Howard stated, for someone to touch me, I think that was very uncalled for him to touch me as we were verbalizing and communicating with one another. So that's what ended up happening. That's where it escalated. Mm -hmm. Joan Howard has since issued a public apology. So ladies, what are your thoughts? You know, everybody has their pressure points. Yeah. You know, um, unfortunately, putting your hands on someone else is, uh, oh, okay. yeah. Losing his cool uh, is what, is what happened. And it, you know what, when somebody hits that nerve, everything else can go out the window, even the repercussions that may be involved. Right. So, you know, five yeah. games out, I'm, I'm sorry that he has to miss it, but there has to be some, some punishment. Well, yes. I think, I feel like something was said. Speaking of the repercussions. I mean, not that it's okay, but I feel like something was said. Well, I mean, when, when, you, when, you saw, when you saw it, he, he asked him three or four times not to touch me. This actually happened because, you know, at the very end of the game, mm -hmm. the um, Wisconsin called a timeout, which really wasn't necessary because, you know, and that is what made Jawan Ju mad. He felt like it was, they were already winning the game. Mm -hmm. My take on this is that they need to stop doing the post-game handshake. They could do a pre-game uh, handshake. Mm. And the reason why I say they should stop doing it, first of all, is because college sports, especially basketball and football, has become very competitive. Mm. And now basketball players, they're making money off of being college basketball yeah. players. They're, you know, it, it's and so that kind of drives you to to you know be more, like more into the game, mm -hmm. very, very much more competitive. So I think that to because this isn't the first time that this has happened. Mm -hmm. This happened also in, in Number, a number of other colleges. Mm -hmm. So I think if they stop the post-game handshake, mm -hmm. do the pre-game handshake, show sportsmanship. And let it in. But after that, because it's getting idea. very competitive, right. you know. Right. So. That's a great idea. I just feel like when you talked about repercussions, you're talking 40 grand. Mm -hmm. And let's keep it real, y'all. When you have money, mm. More money, more problems. People are going to antagonize yeah. you. Mm. They are going to try to rile you up. Cause let me let's let's keep it real. If you have money and you hit somebody, they're gonna sue you. They're gonna sue they're, you. You're gonna get. They want to sue you when sure. you don't anyway. have money. Hello, right, look exactly. at the baby. Mm -hmm. He threw the first punch, and now he's getting sued by Brandon Bills, who actually was technically antagonizing him. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But the moment you throw that punch, like you said, you gotta everything keep goes your out the cool. window. Prepare mm -hmm. that you're gonna have something to pay. You know what's so crazy is whenever I'm watching the football games yeah. and they're going at it, and when they tackle somebody down, they go, uh, uh. My first inclination, if that were done to me, I'd get up and want to fight. Yeah. But it's like they have yeah. to get up and right. walk away. Right. Yeah. And so that's the best way of keeping your cool. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. They just gotta find a way to to help these coaches. I mean, mm -hmm. and he's also, you know, not presenting a good example to his team, to, you know, to his players, mm -hmm. because some of them got suspended too, because then it was all out yeah. raw. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's like, they, yeah. they'll figure it out. And, you know? and uh, they called a timeout. Yeah. Right, definitely. It, that wasn't out yeah. of hand. Yeah. Well, check this out. Mm -hmm. A Texas attorney general is deeming any parent who assists their child's gender transition under the age of 17 as child abuse in his opinion. Attorney General <laughs> Ken Paxton, stated, certain procedures done on minors, such as castration, fabrication of a penis during tissue, using tissue from other body parts, fabrication of a vagina involving the removal of male sex organs, prescription of puberty suppressors and infertility inducers and the like are all abuse. Paxton has even received support from the Texas governor, Greg Abbott, who tweeted, the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services will enforce this ruling and investigate and refer for prosecution any such abuse. Your thoughts? Ooh, that sounded like you were in a courtroom. Yeah, I, <laughs> but I was reading. Come on, Detroit Public School. Look, this is look, this is what's lot. happening. It's a lot. There's a society of doctors that have guidelines, and they say that it's recommended that um, by the age of 16 through um, having different types of um, 
hormones. Developmental, psychological, spearheaded processes with the parent and the child mm -hmm. that then you can make decisions. Mm -hmm. So it's not child abuse. It's mm -hmm. actually processes that have been set up mm -hmm. by medical professionals. Mm -hmm. So I just want people to understand that, that it's, you have help out there if you have a child and maybe you guys to have to go through the process. To and it's, it's a long process. It involves psychology and, and mm -hmm. psychomanics. And it, it does, you don't instantly, you know, you go into therapy. You don't wake up and say, I remove my genitals exactly. or change them and they automatically, there are right. guidelines mm -hmm. in place for this. So I completely agree with you. I don't believe this is child abuse, I think that's pushing it really far. I think mm -hmm. that it's probably a really difficult thing to handle initially, because mm -hmm. you're going through the, as a parent, if you have a child who feels that, you know, they're, they want to become, you know, a male or a female, that's, you're also in that process with, with them. That. Right. You are going through the changes with them because it's hard for you to, I'm sure that there's so much that goes into it emotionally, physically, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. With that being said, guys, when I was 19 years old, I got breast implants. Do you know that in order for me to get breast implants, I had to go through a, I had to talk to a therapist? Mm. Yeah. I had to talk to somebody and tell sure. them why I wanted them, what were the results right. I expected mm. from them, right. why was I wanting, and that was for breast implants at 19 years old. Right. right. Crazy enough, which gets interesting, I regret mm. having that surgery. Mm. I regret because at the time, being 19 years old, I thought I wanted porn star boobs, and I, uh, that's the look I was going for yeah. at that time. I thought that was cool then. Yeah. So the evaluation that you had back then, yeah. did it help you to make the decision? Yeah, but that was just what I thought I wanted Want then. To. I genuinely thought I wanted that then, and two years later when I had them removed, I did not want that look any longer. Mm -hmm. But so I wouldn't know that had I not gone through that, obviously the process of removing breast implants is very different from a transition, mm -hmm. but I, I, I don't it's, know mm -hmm. if people have ever experienced, I'm sure that there is somebody that has absolutely transitioned and at some but point said, I just said, think it's not child abuse. Well, but that, yeah, but that's not, but that's, not, right. that's not everybody and it's also not child abuse. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I also feel like abuse. the law shouldn't dictate what we get to right. do with our body. Right. That's my issue yeah. with yeah. it. Mm -hmm. This is a personal decision. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. But, but it's crazy how for breast implants you do have have to be eight but years see, old. that's what, what you're just saying kind of goes with why I don't, I think 16, in my opinion, is too young. Yeah. To, for any type of medical procedure. I don't it was care 19, what it is. And I changed my mind. That's what I'm saying. It's like, it should be when you're an adult, 18, yeah. um, evaluations, things like that. But I don't think that is child abuse. What about I, the kids I think it's a completely different situation, though. Knowing they're in the wrong that's, that's, body. That's why now, I what do you say... do with those kids that are so. Clear. Sure. Yeah. And Breast implants is not the same as this. No. I just want to clarify that. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's not the same because this is a real identity situation. Mm -hmm. My breast implants were not my identity. Mm -hmm. But I do think that that's completely different when you have a child right. who is Who's telling you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. If you're very clear and you go through the evaluations, I'm pretty sure there could be exceptions. Mm -hmm. But I do think that there should be a thorough, and there is a thorough evaluation. There are thorough things that we need to think about yeah. before we just jump in and let everybody, you know what I mean? Yeah. Let everybody There do is it. a process. It's a, a way case by case basis. Exactly. Exactly. But it's not child abuse. Exactly. Right. It's not it's child not. abuse. Yeah. Exactly. Now, we all know that February is Black History Month. Yes! Throughout the month, we're honoring small black owned businesses who are staples in their community. So as we head off to break, meet the folks over at Atkins Paving in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. We'll be right back with more girl chat you're watching the real hey what's going on ladies from the real it's your guy walter atkins jr from atkins paving inc down here in sunny south florida we watch you guys every day on wsvn channel 7 here in the fort lauderdale and miami area we are locally owned black owned company the company was started 25 years ago by my father walter atkins senior we specialize in asphalt paving seal coating site development concrete work road construction so if you're ever down in the South Florida area, come and check us out. 